schmeiß das Video an. 3D-Scanner interessiert mich auch. Ja, das Schlimme ist, mich interessiert das auch. Mich interessiert, mich interessiert das auch so sehr, dass ich schon wieder mir innerlich denke, geil, Alter, dann kann man ja ganz viel tolle Sachen machen und äh, ich bin gespannt, was der Preis dazu äh, sagt. Und auf eine gewisse Art und Weise, ich liebe Dan, also als Kollegen und die Arbeit, die er tut für die Simracing Community, aber manchmal hasse ich Dan auch. Und Harry, ich gucke genau dich an, weil du stehst hier in diesem Raum, weil Dan irgendwann mal gezeigt hat, was man mit einem 3D-Drucker machen kann. So, bam. Aber schön, dass du da bist. Wir haben schon viele gemeinsame Erinnerungen geschaffen und ganz viele tolle Dru äh, Drucke gemacht. Aber wegen dir muss ich jetzt noch konstruieren lernen, muss mich von Shazo mal anschreien lassen, was ich übrigens sehr gerne mache, weil Shazo eine Virtuose ist in diesem ganzen Ding. Aber es macht mich wahnsinnig, weil ich lerne es halt immer nachts um 23 Uhr, wenn sowieso schon Ente trennt in der Birne ist, damit du was zu fressen hast und ausdrucken kannst. Okay, gut, schön. Gucken wir uns doch mal an, ha! wie ein 3D-Scanner funktioniert. Mm. Und wir machen den Untertitel an, weil letztens hat mich eine sehr nette Dame darauf aufmerksam gemacht, dass ich doch bitte bei solchen Videos äh, den Untertitel anmache. Hey guys, Dan here. Today we talk about something a little different. 3D scanning and how it could be useful for sim racing. So what we have here is the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. It's a 3D scanner that works either with your computer attached with this cable or you can also like When you buy it, you get this box here. You can pretty much mount your phone onto this here. And then this goes in between. This is basically a Wi-Fi receiver for the phone so that the phone receives all the data from the scanner and can process the model. But if you want to do really high precision stuff, I would always recommend to connect it to the PC because you just get better quality processing and the model will look a little bit better. And especially for what we are trying today, it's a bit more useful to have it directly connected to the PC. Hast du mein Leben jetzt schon? Die nächsten, 13, die nächsten 12 Minuten wären definitiv für mich eine Qual. Bis zum Preis. Bis zum Preis. But yeah, let's say you want to 3D scan something in the nature. You can do this. Just use these two accessories. Plug in your phone and you're good to go. But yeah, how does this work? To make it very, very simple, there's an array of camera, like IR, regular cameras. I don't want to go too much into detail how it works, but pretty much you can scan objects and generate an STL file, for example, for 3D printing with it. And even though there are probably niches out there where 3D scanning is more useful than in sim racing, I was trying to find something to show you in the niche, so it's not a completely out of scope video. And for that, we want to talk about 3D scanning a wheel. Why can that be useful? Well, you know, it is really hard to actually try out wheels and like feel how the grips feel. And it would be nice to have like a database of steering wheels. I mean, I have so many wheels here. I could all scan them and then you could just 3D print those grips and see if it works with your hands. So scanning a, a wheel takes about 10 to 15 minutes in decent resolution, I would say. Um, since most of the wheels are very, well, not very colorful, like this X29 from GSI, for example, it can help to put on these little stickers. You get tons of them in the box that basically helps the 3D scanner track the object and know where we are. And especially when you're scanning the front and then try to go to the backside, sometimes the scanner loses tracking. And if you add these dots, it can help a lot. You can see I have them on the back, I have them on the top, just like randomly placed here to help with the tracking. And if we actually hop into the software here, let's put the wheel here on this little manual <laughs> turntable. I also have an automated turntable, but from my experience, it was a little bit better to just like take your time, rotate it manually, scan it slowly with a scanner. And the results I got were pretty good. I mean, it's not. Not a perfect scan. It's not like you will have every tiny detail. I mean, the scanner can, in theory, scan with a resolution of up to 0.1 millimeter and also objects up to two meters. But for what I tried here, scanning the grips, it worked really well. So basically what you want to do is like start the software either on your phone or on the PC. Like I said earlier on the PC, you get a little bit better results, for, especially for difficult to scan stuff like this. But pretty much go to scan. And then you can select the object. So for the steering wheel, we want to go mm. to normal. You can also scan a face and a body. It works, it works really well. I actually scanned my hand to create a holder for sim racing gloves. <laughs> it's, it turned out really well. The gloves fit well. It just looked a little bit creepy on the wall when I mounted it. But Guck mal, Dan hat nicht mal Onlyfans und zeigt Hände. Dan hat nicht mal Onlyfans und zeigt Hände. Einfach so. Andere würden dafür Geld bezahlen. 
Pendel zu sehen. Denn aber was ist denn hier los? Wahrscheinlich der Scan mal. Uh, I need to see if I can maybe mount it to the rig or so to just like have a few gloves always available. If someone is interested, I can post the model of my hands. It fits like a glove size L. <lacht> <lacht> ja, das wäre total toll, Dan. Ich wollte mir schon immer mal, weil ich großer Fan bin, von dir deine Hände ausdrucken. Kannst du da bitte auch ein Autogramm drauf machen? Das wäre echt toll. <lacht> die mache ich mir dann hier an die Wand und dann kann ich sagen, ich habe Dan Suzuki seine Hände an der Wand. Hui! Uh, but today we're looking at the wheel. So we want to do normal. Size would be small is up to 25 centimeters. Medium is up to 50. So this is what we want to go. And if you have very large objects, this is probably more something when you're not connected to a PC. Um, you can scan up to two meter. Moment, wo ich gerade lese. Wir können uns selber scannen und einen Pappaufsteller machen. Oh, yeah. Sogar 3D Pappaufsteller. Oh, oh. In each dimension. Then there are different scan modes. You can either use the geometry mode, the texture mode, or the marker mode. I found with this what works best is texture or marker. We'll go with the marker mode for now. We don't really need any textures of the wheel anyways. Then accuracy, I've always used high quality. Color mapping is whether you want the textures to be visible on the 3D model. We'll, we'll leave it on here. And then turntable, I mean basically rotating the model like this is a turntable. I didn't notice a big difference whether this is set to yes or no. We'll just put it to yes here for now and then we'll go to new scan. So what you want to do, let me position the model here so you can see it better. Take the camera and just hold it in front of the wheel. And now it will automatically tell you what you're supposed to do. Let's remove the, the stand here because then I have a little bit more room Optimal distance, keep it up. So this is a good place to start. And then we click the start button. And now it's scanning the wheel. You can see here the green represents stuff that already has been scanned. And pretty much what you want to do is move farther. It always will tell you what you're supposed to do. It's not ideal that I have the monitor in the background here since that reflects a little bit of the camera light. But you just, as you can see, it's like a really, really easy to do you basically just want to scan the whole wheel oh. move further until the whole thing is green we probably will not scan the whole object here because it it can take some time maybe we'll just do the front side i have done the full scan of the x29 already and it turned out pretty great let's see if it will yeah see especially like when you're uh, approaching the corners of the wheel It sometimes loses tracking and you need to like, what I found works well is like go over the top. It's just, it's a learning experience. Like, especially if you're new to 3D scanning. Oh, now I scanned my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be careful there, but we can remove that later anyways. So let's just, let's just scan the front. We are not doing, oh, now we lost tracking. So what you want to do when you lose tracking is just hey, go to the front of something then. that is easily recognizable until it turns green again because like if it loses tracking you see it's red now and insufficient please uh, it says insufficient valid scan points or it will say lost tracking so when you see that just go to the front again and wait till it found the tracking again das ist ja richtig geil and yeah like if i want to scan the full thing you can also like rotate the camera try to go to the bottom here It's, yeah, like I said, maybe like 15 minutes or so for this wheel, including my hand. Uh, we'll just to take the front side and once we're done, we click on complete, complete scanning, yes. And now we have the point model here. You see the back side is obviously not processed, so we just do the front. We'll leave all the settings on auto for now. If you do the f full thing, it can help to like tweak the settings here. For example, if we go to... Oh, I started the optimization <laughs> that I can show you afterwards. Let's see what it was doing with this basic scan. This is relatively quick on the PC, like on the phone it takes longer and this is a beefy PC, like it doesn't really get much faster than this one. So it takes a lot of processing power to generate these models. <sighs> Dan macht das schon schlau. Das, der Preis kommt erst am Ende. Oder gar nicht. Mm. But let's see what it comes up with. And here we are. This is the model it created. I mean, as you can see, like, 
I need to scan a bit more closely, so it's missing a lot of points, especially like obviously the rear side. Nothing has been scanned, but you want to like point the camera to these areas a bit more to the buttons to get really the precise scanning. But you can see the grips already look pretty good here in this model. And if you're done processing, like I said here, you can increase or decrease resolution, sensitivity, or oh, I shouldn't. <laughs> Mitten nimmst du ein Video auf, ja, habe ich schon tausendmal gemacht und dann aus Versehen, scheiße, ich habe mich verklickt. Nein. Das war bei meinem LMU-Guide so. Jedes Mal, wenn ich was einstellen wollte, ist mir das Game abgestürzt. Und ich habe wirklich für ein Segment, was 40 Sekunden gehen sollte, einfach eine Viertelstunde gebraucht, weil es halt ständig abgekackt ist. Und gerade hier, also so bei 3D-Zeug, da bist du halt am, am Hintern. Das dauert halt wirklich. Let's lange. create the mesh. And what that did is basically connect all these points. Like, I mean, Ooh. it's not the best resolution here right now for the buttons, for example. Like I said, we need a bit more in detail scanning for that. But the grips already turned out pretty well. And if you denoise it a little bit, that can help to remove the roughness on some of these areas. You can also do fill holes. We don't do that now because we didn't scan the back. But like if you scan the whole thing, there are still a few parts where it maybe didn't scan it properly. Then you can just enable fill holes and it will uh, close those for you. Then if we go to color mapping, it should add the texture. You don't have to do this manually, by the way. You can also just click the one-click processing and then it will do everything with the settings that it thinks is the best for the scan. Okay. And now we actually have a model Was? with a texture on there. Ah? Ey, dafür würde ich aber mir wirklich eine Viertelstunde Zeit nehmen. Lol, wie geil ist das denn? It's not ideal lighting because like this scene is obviously lighted for my face and not for the object. What I found works really well. Like a nice softbox, for example, that doesn't have harsh shadows. Really good for 3D scanning. Oh, you see also a bit of my hand here. Um... But yeah, I have done this wow. in a bit more detail with the model already. Once you're done, you can click here, export, and generate an STL file or uh, object file, for example. But then you want to go to your slicer software and open the file. I'm using the uh, Creality K1 Max 3D printer at the moment. Really good printer, can highly recommend. But this is the scan that I came up with. You can see it looks significantly better because I actually, like, I spent some time with this. I don't want to bore you to death doing this in the video, but um, let's quickly orient this a little bit. What I am interested in, you can see, like, even the, the clutch pedals, it didn't sc scan this one for whatever That's reason. That's but, close. like, even the details, like, the screws turned out really, really well. But if we are only interested in the grips, what I do is split it up. Like here we just need, I mean, we don't need the, the stand thingy. So we will cut it roughly here, start splitting. Then we remove this bottom part. And also I don't really care about the rest of the wheel. Let's quickly rotate it a little bit more so we can more easily split it. I mean, I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to slicer software, but that's how I do it. <coughs> so let's say we only want the grips. So we'll split another time here. And then let's lay it on this face. We don't really need the shifters as well. So I would do another split. Mein Fusion-Gehirn dreht gerade richtig durch. Oh, oh. In this here, start split, delete this. And then we can print just this part. And I have done that already. Looks like this. Turned out really well. I mean, obviously. <laughs> no. You want to do a little bit of post-processing on the model. Like these are the dots, for example, that I put on. They are still slightly visible in the scan but you don't really feel them once you printed it out, but still you can do a little bit of smoothening here. But I have to say, I mean, obviously this is a nice rubber grip and feels slightly more comfortable, but to get an impression how a wheel will feel in your hands if you have a 3D printer, 
or if you know somebody that has a 3D printer, I think this is better than nothing. So I'm thinking to maybe scan a few of the more popular wheels. I mean, I don't know how it is regarding distribution of these files. If there are any, like, I probably would just ask the wheel manufacturers if they would be. Ich wollte gerade sagen, also du kannst ja nicht das ein Herr Christian und davon so ein Modell baust. Fine with a scan of that. Ah, die Idee ist cool. I think it's a very nice way to see because it it feels very very comparable. I mean, obviously it's not as squishy, but it's a very nice way to see if this will work with your hands or not without having to buy the wheel and testing sim racing equipment is really really difficult. So no. yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you would be interested in something like that. If you are interested in the 3D scanner, I mean, you can use it to scan a variety of stuff. This is the Creality Ferret Scan Pro. Um, in Germany, it's 460 euros. There's also a cheaper alternative with a lower resolution, no Wi-Fi, probably more than sufficient for stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing, fascinating technology. It's it's good to play around with that. And I really think for sim racing, this could be a good use case to help people test different wheels. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you would be interested in some of the scans. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos. Also, let me know if you would be interested in more of these DIY, 3D printing, 3D scanning type of videos in the future or not. Um, it's kind of like a new field for me to explore. I'm having fun with it. But yeah, just let me know. And Vor allen Dingen Dan, der Ingenieur. Ja, ich habe jetzt mal Lust, DIY zu machen. Und denkst du dann immer so, okay, Dan. Mm -hmm. Ja. Also, falls ihr Dan nicht kennen solltet... Um Schaut mal bei Dan vorbei und dann kommt noch mal zu dieser Rubrik zurück, wo er sagt, ich hätte mal Bock, so ein bisschen DIY zu machen. <lacht> ich glaube, versteckt, ohne, also ohne, ich glaube, ohne, ohne dieses Dan Suzuki-Ding, das ist ein richtig pfiffig, pfiffiger Kerl. Also Dan ist wirklich unfassbar schlau, was, was so dieses ganze, wie soll ich denn das jetzt sagen, Inleben von Lenkrädern zum Beispiel. Ich, ich glaube, er verkauft sich hier ein bisschen unter Wert. <lacht> also, deswegen. Deswegen ist das sehr witzig. Ja, ich würde jetzt gerne mal so ein bisschen in DIY reingucken. <lacht> okay, Dan. Und was ist das andere dann? That's already. Aber vielleicht, na gut, vielleicht, weil er das als seinen Job hat, äh, dass, das, dass er das dann nicht als DIY ansieht. Das weiß ich nicht. Jetzt for the video. I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Bye, Dan. Und äh, danke. I hate you, but I love you. Was will er mit DIY? Er hat gefühlt, jedes Lenkrad äh, an der Wand hängen. Ja, aber. Ist ja schön, sich nochmal so ein bisschen zu bilden. Also du darfst halt immer nicht vergessen, nur weil etwas da ist und du gefühlt alles hast, äh, kannst du ja trotzdem deinen Horizont erweitern. Ich glaube, er bezieht das äh, nur darauf, Videos auf DIY so zu machen. Äh, ach so, ja, das kann natürlich auch sein, Arkek. Ja, also vielleicht verstehe ich das auch einfach miss, dass das wirklich nur in die in die Videorichtung äh, geht. Aber für mich ist Dan einfach, muss ich ganz ehrlich sagen, ein, eine, eine sehr gute und wichtige Säule für, für Sim Racing. Weil der, der, der guckt halt irgendwie sehr tief ins Glas, also positiv hinter die Kulisse und teilt sehr viel. Das ist echt krass. Der ist so, der, der ist so ein unfassbar schlauer Mensch. Unfassbar schlau. Puh, Wahnsinn.